Hi there, welcome back to the Spark is Love. We have a yummy interview today with my sister, Crystal Simpson, and she's representing her company, KTAL Services. So Crystal, where are you right now? I am actually in my beautiful island of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm loving this sunrise. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful beautiful now crystal you have helped me so much you are an accountability coach um, right. you want to share a little bit of what you do so as an accountability coach i help female entrepreneurs who feel overwhelmed burnout who may suffer from anxiety who have been moms like yourself and you know mm -hmm. looking to see how um they can be able to get a break really from like they don't know they don't know how to get that break so what mm -hmm. i do is i help them to remain um, motivated to pursue the goals that they have all right mm -hmm. and also to be able to balance their time so that they can spend time with the ones that they love and also enjoy life basically Yes, you have an excellent product. And you know, I I am your your quote is big sister in the business, but I happen you happen to be my big sister. And I I am just so I want to share this content because you are amazing. What you're doing is amazing because we all know what we have to do, but it's just the sometimes we lose the drive to do it. And right. I you I I just had a nutrition class. And we talked about eating right and everybody knows we need to eat better. We know what we should do. We can't mm -hmm. do it. But we collaborated today because we're going to talk about a specific population. And that's our girls with PCOS, polycystic right. ovarian syndrome. Let me just take a second to explain to our viewers what PCOS is. So yes. it's a hormonal imbalance, right? And usually the imbalance is between two hormones estrogen and progesterone right and so to be diagnosed with pcos you have to have two out of three symptoms it could be in any any order but usually the three symptoms are excess hair growth right or of course cysts on your ovaries which they would see in an ultrasound or you would have an irregular menstrual cycle so do any two out of those three combinations they would diagnose you with PCOS. Currently in the medical field, there is no, they have um, speculations, there's a lot of research going on, but they don't know what causes it. There's a lot of correlations, but nothing definite to say what causes it. And the treatment that your provider usually would prescribe would be birth control, or sometimes they do, um, they do metformin, because they realize that um, most women with PCOS have um, insulin resistance. So even though their blood sugars um, are running normal, um, it sets them up for prediabetes or diabetes. And metformin helps. It's a diabetic medication that kind of helps to regulate it. So that's the medical side. <laughs> What's yes. your experience, Crystal? Well, I have been diagnosed with PCOS since I was 17. So I had to learn from a very young age, you know, how to be able to manage everything. I had to learn what PCOS really was. And at the time, there wasn't really much information, to be honest. Um, my doctor, at the time, she just told me, hey, um, this is what PCOS does say, buddy. You, you may not be able to have kids. So you're 17, I'm giving you six years to have kids, have at least two, <laughs> all right? <laughs> exercise, exercise and, and um, eat healthy foods. And she's like, don't eat, try not to eat a lot of chicken because of the hormones in the chicken is gonna counteract with the hormones in your body and just eat healthy green stuff. And I was like, okay, I was like, but why, why, why have a timeline, you know, to have kids and all of that drama. And mm -hmm. so I started to do my own research and through doing my research, I realized that, you know, just maintaining a healthy lifestyle and um, together with diet is also important, mm -hmm. right? So not just, so healthy lifestyle for me, let me just go into that, would be also not just what we eat mm -hmm. physically, but also what we eat mentally, 
you know mm, and, there you go <laughs> right and i mean it took me a while to understand that aspect the mental part but for the most part growing up i was able to maintain i would exercise i would always i was a gym junkie at one point in time um mm. eating healthy food was something that we grew up doing so it mm-hmm. wasn't too hard for me to like go up certain things or just eat them at a minimum and then as mm-hmm. I got, got older I recognized more and more I got more in tune with my body and I recognized mm-hmm. what my body likes and what mm-hmm. my body didn't like so I would know how to eat basically and then okay. eventually as I said the mental aspect um, yes. I realized that also mentally I had to keep a stress-free life, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Crystal, you mind me sharing my story? Go about ahead. PCOS? Yes, go, go ahead. Okay, so so when I was 16, I, w- um, I think we had the same doctor, yes. <laughs> our family doctor, but I, um, I never had a regular cycle from the day my cycle started. And when I was 16, my doctor diagnosed me with PCOS, she saw the, the cyst on my ovaries, and she told me at 16, she said, you need to get on birth control, and you're probably never going to have a child, and if you don't take this birth control, you're going to get hair all over your body in places you don't want to, so I was like, I, I never really had a desire to have children, so I, it didn't bother me that much, but my mom didn't want me to go on birth control at 16 years old, so we tried many different things. And eventually, um, my cycle, I, I was like the woman in the Bible with the flow of blood. I would have my period for like a whole year. I didn't have the pain. I just bled all the time. I was given always and maxi prime business because I was constantly on my period. And yes. um, that was, of course, annoying. But like you talked about, um, and, and I think we're going to get a little bit into this together. Um, when it comes to PCOS, it's not just your hormones. It's your mental, your, 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 your mind, your stress. It's also your eating involved. But it's kind of like a catch because when your hormones are out of whack, you don't want to eat healthy. You want to eat to soothe your feelings. And so your hormones drive your taste, your appetite, your everything. And then that makes you feel bad. <laughs> and, and so it's like you're in a cycle. I don't know if you experienced this, Crystal, but you're like in a cycle that is so vicious. Your hormones are up and down. Your food, your food is up and down and your feelings are up and down. I don't know if you experienced that. Yes. Yes, it has, it, it does take you on a, a roller coaster and it's not just emotionally, it's like everything, everything, everything roller coaster because too with me, I would also get fatigued and sometimes yeah. I would have a lot of energy and then I would be in bed for two days because mm-hmm. I'm so, you know, I can't do mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. I have to <laughs> yeah. I, and you know, a lot of my friends with PCOS, you know, we struggle because sometimes you feel like you're absolutely lazy because you know what your you know what your normal feels like and there is no reason why but you just feel like you can't do it you can't be there all right and even like growing up sometimes you know um and i didn't recognize this until later on that sometimes there would be normal chores at at home to get done and Mm -hmm. i mean you all used to knock me for it a lot but it was not until I was older that I realized that hey you're not lazy it's your body just yeah. telling you you can't do it you know yeah so I had yeah. to live to, to be at ease with my body and when I'm when I have a one high utilize that high moment and then mm-hmm. so it's not it's lazy. true <laughs> it's it's not lazy and I think a lot of girls they feel lazy and then your body starts um not responding to you and then you start feeling bad and then you start eating which for me I tried really hard and I didn't know why I would always go back to junk food and I didn't yeah. realize that that was hormonally and emotionally eating and it was like a catch because it because your cycle internally is out of whack your cycle mm. mentally emotionally everything is it, it gets disturbed 
for me, I don't know if you, you joined in for my mental health class, but for me, that took a blow to my mental health because mm-hmm. I not only did I not know about mental hygiene, but I didn't know, I didn't know why, how to deal with the feelings. I didn't know how to deal with the, the, the lows, the highs everybody loved, but the lows, I didn't know why they were happening and I didn't make the connection to PCOS. Right. Yes. Yeah, I actually, yes, I was in your class. And as I said, it was not until recently. So like about within the last year, year and a half, then when I started really actually deep diving into me, that I started to make connections with myself and with things that happened in the past that Mm. I started to understand, hey, this Mm. is why this happened, but this is why it didn't happen this way. So, yeah. Yes, yes, it, it's true. Because sometimes I thought, oh man, maybe my spiritual is off, or maybe, <laughs> maybe I need to exercise more. Not realizing exercising more actually triggered for me. It triggered my PCOS because exercise creates stress. And in oh. my personal research, um, I realized that in the kidneys, right on top of the kidneys, you have the adrenal glands, and when oh. you're stressed, they produce cortisol, right? And we already live in a stressed out world. So when you add even more stress to it, to to create cortisol, it pulls from progesterone. So for me, in my journey, I actually needed not to exercise or not to exercise so strenuously. I needed to rest. Yes. That that was mine. Um, that was my journey. And it's kind of when you're gaining weight, you're not thinking about resting. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that was my experience. So yes. Crystal, I, I I'm talking a lot. Let's get back to the accountability. So you did you did a reel about procrastination and whoo, how how would you help someone with PCOS like how pivotal is it to be to have an accountability coach when you are trying to live life to, to the fullest with PCOS? All right. So having PCOS myself, <laughs> I had to learn to be kind to myself. Mm-hmm. And yes, we would set deadlines because we have we want to get things done. And also, well, before I get it, besides being an accountability coach, this is my business, right? This is my only mm-hmm. source of income. So that means mm-hmm. I'm a business owner. So that mm-hmm. means that I work for myself. If I don't yeah. work, I don't get paid, right? Yes. So- <laughs> you don't eat. <laughs> that, so that means that I have to work, right? In the past, I mean, I've been a hustler, a dabbler. I did a lot mm-hmm. of different things until before I settled down to doing this, right? And... Mm-hmm. In the past, my jobs used to, I, I was always on the go. I was always, everybody's like, oh, Crystal, you're so busy. You're so busy. We can't get a hold of you. But, and that's what I kept doing. I was always on the go. But in the, in the end of that, I would always end up being extremely tired. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago, as I said, when I started to do the introspection. And I'm like, listen, I want to be able to live and enjoy my life. Mm-hmm. How am I going to do that plus week, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's when I started to dabble in, well, look at the time management and mm-hmm. try to keep a, a good schedule. Now, I thought I was also, I was doing a good job at time management as well, eh? but it wasn't mm-hmm. until I actually started to do more research and I realized what time management really is. We sometimes think that, okay, if we do a to-do list and we stick to the plan, then that's fine. But mm-hmm. sometimes our to-do list would be so crammed, right? With, with things that we have to do. We say that we mm-hmm. have to get this done. And with it being so crammed, we end up being more overwhelmed, more stressed out, right? Yeah. So as I said, so what I teach people is to have grace with yourself. So when it is that mm-hmm. we, we sit and we plan, what your goal is. That's the first thing, you know, that we look at what is your goal. And then we set small steps to get to that goal. All right. And for me, that has worked 
very well. You know, it's been, it's worked really well in my life that I've been able to accomplish goals even faster than if it is that I was busy, busy, busy doing, living life and doing stuff. Mm-hmm. By going with grace through life, it has helped me to um, set these smaller goals, learn my, my body rhythms, right? That has mm-hmm. been super important because I realized too, I mean, you mentioned putting on weights, you know, um, when I, for me, when I am super busy, again, stress, I put on weight, all right? So mm-hmm. I learned to, um, by planning, not just my, my week and, um, yeah, I plan my week and I'm able to set in each day time just to rest because it is important to get the rest. Even if it's just a, a 15 minutes that you just sit and you do nothing, it helps mm-hmm. you. It helps you just to recuperate that energy and keep you going. Yeah. Another thing too is um, I tell people that it's good for them too when, when you feel energized utilize that time too that if you mm-hmm. feel energized and you could go go ahead just go just go do it and then after rest rest is mm-hmm. very important if you go to my page kata services on instagram you always mm-hmm. see every sunday self-care sunday you know because yeah. we should have a day to just celebrate us and do nothing you know mm-hmm. so that we could rejuvenate recuperate get our stuff back together and move on yeah. yeah yeah crystal you know i think i think you're an awesome coach and i think every woman should have you as a coach but i think especially women with hormonal issues and I, mm. i'll give you a little bit of my story because mm. well you know my story <laughs> eventually you know i went on this hike because i was like well um my body rejected birth control you know i don't know why but it did not like it so i had to go on a search and I went to the um, naturopath and I looked for an integrative doctor that will work along with my naturopath. And I went through many doctors and I finally came up with a, a good system. Um, one of my integrative doctors, she actually, um, now I'm not prescribing anything. Please check with your doctor. I did. But um, she pre- she prescribed this. Um, it's called, let me put, it's called Dim Active. And mm-hmm. I just get it off of Amazon. And what it is, is that there, there is research show, that shows with PCOS, um, cruciferous, crucifer, like foods like broccoli, has mm. um, really good effect on our bodies. So this mm-hmm. is like a concentrated broccoli. Um, and, you know, it, it, broccoli never hurt anybody unless you have an allergy. So I tried it. It helped me a lot. I also tried this um, organic healthy cycle tea. Um, it has raspberry leaf. Um, and sometimes I would take raspberry leaf tea. Um, so so working all of these, eventually I got pregnant. <laughs> so now I have a one-year-old son and now I'm trying to start a business. And Crystal, I'm, I'm bringing all of this back because you helped me. You helped mm-hmm. me to not just start up um, with the Spark is Love on YouTube, not just become a YouTuber and pump out content, but you helped me to do it with grace and ease. And mm-hmm. with someone who has PCOS, I, or just any hormonal, I think us women, we suffer from wanting to be it all and do it all. And we yes. don't work with our natural cycle. And you help me work with my natural cycle to accomplish so much in such a short space of time with a newborn and a husband who works full time and in school. So I'm a busy mom and you helped me and I did it. I did what I wanted to do. And so that's why I'm giving you a shout out because your product is I'm not just saying it because you're my sister, but I'm saying it because it works. Right. Yes. And I thank you for that, you know. Um, And and this is the thing, you know, that um, a lot of women who are in business, who are now either starting up, who have been in business for a while, and they just keep going in this rat race, you know. And so I was so glad to be able to help you so that you don't 
because you didn't form that habit, right? Because once we form that habit, a habit takes a while for us to break it, you know? Mm -hmm. So for, for somebody who's now starting up in business or who's just, um, these are habits that we need to not form from be before, you know, mm -hmm. and not everybody knows that everybody just follows the crowd. This is what somebody does. This is what X person does. And the world, as we know it, has the idea that an entrepreneur has to go to bed last and wake up first, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. it's true. <clears throat> go to bed late and they wake up early in the morning and they start the day and they just go but how are you enjoying life how are mm -hmm. you enjoying what you do how are you being optimum to your clients how are you being able to provide quality service or products for your clients if you are tired or if you don't have time to see about you you can't we mm -hmm. can't pour from an empty cup you know, and this is why I, I, I try to help my clients first by helping them set proper schedules, mm -hmm. right, where they incorporate everything. And, and the thing is, <laughs> for instance, feel that like when you set a schedule, it ties you down. But mm -hmm. to be honest, I love setting my schedule because I know exactly what I have to do every week before the week starts. I know when I have flexi time, I know when I have, um, I would have a busy day, right? And I know if I could, if somebody says, hey, Crystal, you want to go on the beach? I mean, beaches are closed right now, but I know, <laughs> hey, I could be able to do this with my schedule yes. because I'm not so crammed. And yes. I'm still able to serve my clients, right? Yes. And, and be a great support to them as well so yeah um so as i said forming these habits it's, it's just a it's habit forming you know and mm -hmm. it's good for us to start turning those unhealthy habits into good positive healthy habits and developing proper routines in our life because as the more we do it the more consistently we do something the the easier it is for us to continue doing it all right, and the easier mm -hmm. it is for us to feel better about ourselves at the end of the day. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And I don't want to give away all your bonuses, but I had <laughs> the privilege to do your time management class. And yes. I have had, I've read so many articles on time management. I have had, I have taken time management courses before, but this class, it really, really change it it put a change deep within me and i would recommend it not just for business women but any woman who has a hard time meeting her goals because what i like about your class um it was just not it was not just about um meeting your goals business wise you you tackled just about every goal spiritual yes. goal relationship goals, you know, personal goals, eating habits, any goal a woman wants to reach, you really target it. And and I think I think it's because we put everybody's priorities above ours. And then nothing gets done right. It, it, so the way you the way you did it in the class and the way you you really retrain our brains, it was really, really effective. Really effective. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would just fill the bean on this one. Um, if most people go to my bio, they would see that I speak about a work-life harmony. Most people mm -hmm. talk about a work-life balance, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, balance is giving and taking, giving and taking. Something either goes up, something goes down, you know? Mm -hmm. But if there's harmony throughout all aspects of our lives, then we're able to actually feel more fulfilled, feel more happy, feel or feel happier <laughs> and feel more positive about what yeah. we plan to do and and moving forward for us would be so much more it would be so much easier when when we know or we, we have that harmony that flexibility mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we'd be able to maintain a happier and more enjoyable life rather than yeah. trying to fit everything oh my gosh I have to do this or oh, how about date night with my husband how about Oh, I have this to do. I'm not getting up mm -hmm. to do my Bible reading. What, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. instead of trying to balance it, we just merge it and we make it, um, harmonize it. Golden, golden. And you know, Crystal, I think coming back to Our Ladies with 
PCOS or any hormonal imbalance, when your internal system is not balanced, I think one of the best things you could do is do as much as you can to balance your external, what you have control over. And it helps you from not feeling crazy <laughs> when, when you can, but it actually does help your body too. When you can balance what you can balance, it, yes. you, your, your system is out of balance. So when your external balances, your inter, it helps your internal to get into a routine because it's a cyclical problem. So there is no cycle. So we kind of have to fake it, not fake it, but create, create cycles. So our yes. body, our body can know, um, can take, can get some kind of balance, could get some kind of homeostasis going on. I actually heard um, a TED talk and I thought it was very interesting because um, it, it actually paired well with, with what, I, with, with what we're talking about, um, mm -hmm. with PCOS, a lot of us, our bodies have cycles and rhythms and we're not even paying attention to them. So our body is doing its thing and we're not paying attention to it. And eventually what happens is, it, as we keep on not paying attention to it, over time, it develops, it keeps sending us signals. Over time, it develops disease and the diseases require constant attention so for instance they said pcos is a um, precursor to diabetes now mm -hmm. pcos right now working with you you may talk about you may talk about our goals as far as you know cutting out certain processed foods or certain sweets right but if, right. if we think at this time brief before, because you know, I'm all preventative, right? So if, if we think that's much an, of an investment, man, Crystal gonna ask me about sweets and I just want to eat what I want to eat. Eventually what's gonna happen is that your body, it's insulin resistance. So eventually your body's gonna lead to diabetes and guess sure. what? You're gonna have to now be consciously aware of when you're taking your insulin, when you're gonna take your medicine, you know, what you have to check your blood sugar, at least three times a day. So it, it even though it might seem like upfront, I don't want to pay for an accountability partner to tell me what to eat, or I don't want to, I don't want to have to, anybody tell me what to eat. Eventually your body will just shut down and then you're going to need, you're going to need standard medication and to, to manage diabetes. So Crystal, I just think what you're doing is so, it's so sustainable. It's so helpful. It's right in line with holistic living and well-being yes yes thank you and and too i i'm all about being proactive as well i try to be proactive in all aspects of my life and for me living a healthy life wasn't just about okay yeah i need to be healthy but i look at down the road you know what yeah. I, I i hate needles i don't want to be sticking myself <laughs> you yeah. know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Right. So yes. if I could prevent that from happening now, right, by watching what I eat, being being more mindful of what goes into my my mental, um, who I allow into my space, those are things that are important, you know. And and uh, to be honest, I find that a lot of younger women, they have been seeing signs, but they're afraid to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to get it checked out. Please, I beg you, yeah. go get yourself checked. Make sure, just, just to confirm what you have and then start treating it from an early age, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to, to not enjoy life in the end. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, guess what? You have to be, as Casey said, you would have to be um, dealing with diabetes, dealing with other different internal struggles. You know, some people don't know what's going on on the inside and they spending money by doctors doctor after doctor after doctor right mm -hmm. and they don't know they're not they're not understanding and it's a whole it's an um it's a holistic view that we have to also take as well because our mental could also affect our yeah. bodies right yeah. but yeah. if it is that we get sick i mean i don't have all the the, the answers <laughs> You know, but Casey, yeah. could correct me. I know that some persons who suffer with gut issues have mental issues mm -hmm. that they need 
do it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's important that we 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 live a holistically balanced life, you know, and take the measures now to prevent it from ha- from worsening later on. Yes, yes. And you know, Crystal, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause a little bit. Um, I know we're running out of time, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about um the way we view our body because when you have polycystic ovaries or many other maybe fibroids or endometriosis, um, not only you might be in pain and not mm-hmm. only is your cycle and your mental state off whack, but when you stand in front of the mirror, you might see hair growing on your chin. And you know, for a woman and especially in this society, it is like so devastating. Sometimes I wonder all the makeup that our, you know, our peers are wearing. I'm not against makeup, but I'm just wondering if they have to wear more and more to hide like facial discoloration and hair growth because of the hormonal problems. Have you seen that? And what have you done to, to help and encourage them, um, young, young women? Okay, well, yes. And for me personally, I do have... Mm-hmm. I suffer with with hysteritism, that's the facial mm-hmm. hair, you know, mm-hmm. so I, excess hair, sometimes I have to shave my legs <laughs> more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, but, <hey. laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but um, in order to deal with that, I mean, sometimes we just have to embrace it, you know, embrace who we are, embrace what's going on with us, within us. Um, society has... Um, ways where they have made fun of or made people feel less than because of a diff- because they're different in some way or the other. But we need to learn to not look at people and judge them based on what we see and also learn to, to, to be positive with other persons as well. And then we also be positive with ourselves, our yeah. bodies. You know, if it is that I mean, sometimes I complain about fat on my belly, you know, and that's because of society. Society wants us to be skinny women, you know, but sometimes we, there's nothing that we can do about it because of it being hormonal, you know? So my encouragement is always to just embrace who you are and just work with, with whatever it is. If you don't like me here, get rid of it, you know, Mm -hmm. don't Mm -hmm. don't stress on it because stress will then produce more (laughs) and then guess what it's harder to. So just I am embrace life as it is and live life and enjoy life yeah you know that that is really good that's really good advice I I think also with um products being careful of the products we're using because sometimes they create more problems they have um um it's not estrogen in the products but sometimes and you could do more research but sometimes the there's something that bonds like estrogen. I think it's called xenoestrogen. And it it tells our bodies that we have more estrogen than we really do. And you find mm-hmm. these in face creams and makeup. And so we just have, you know, skin lotion. So sometimes you just have to be careful in trying to hide it, that we're not actually making more of a problem. You know? Yeah. So... Just to go back, because I know we you spoke mm-hmm. of it before quickly before we, we move on. Um, mm-hmm. to, you mentioned where the if you go to the doctors, the doctors like to give us medication. Mm-hmm. And with the medication, we have to be careful as well with that because I can tell you from my personal experience, I've been on birth control, I've used glucophage, I've used metformin, and those things had serious effects, effects to my body, right? To my my um, moods, oh my goodness, my moods, I used to suffer with some really bad mood swings, right? And so we have to be careful with that as well. So I had to look for different ways in order to be able to to deal with um, PCOS and to deal with everything as I was going on with my body, Um, drinking more teas, so bush teas, (laughs) right? Bush teas, and then... um, I did start taking a, a tea for my um for women with PCOS and for hormonal imbalances, which also included a liver detox because keeping a liver clean is also very important um, with when you have PCOS. So we just need to know our bodies, learn your bodies, right? You have to learn your bodies. That's the most that's the most important thing. Learn your body, 
and then know what's good for you. So sometimes we might eat, some persons might eat flour and then they, they feel bloated for the day or whatever. You know, what does flour do to your body? What does sugar mm -hmm. do to your body? Mm -hmm. Understand that sometimes even some certain people can eat certain fruits and vegetables. That's true. That's true. So what for your body? What's good for me may not be good for you, even though we're sisters. You know, you may have an allergic for one thing, and I mean I may not. It's, it's really fine for me. So we have to learn our bodies and work in harmony with our bodies. And what I'm also doing, I started doing research too with um the cycle, with our menstrual cycle and um being able to use it to be productive so <laughs> that's also yes. i mean i'll come out with a with something different to teach women how to use their cycles to be productive when um to be productive throughout the cycle yeah so See, that's why they need to pay up with you <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i'm really happy that you cycled back on your personal experience with medication because I wanted to also talk about when it comes to if you say, hey, I, I heard my friend try this or I'm thinking about trying it. I always say find a doctor that you can work with, um, whether it be an integrative doctor or a holistic um, practice practitioner of medication. And the reason is when you start dealing with hormones and gynecological, you don't want to bleed out and end up in the hospital. Some people yeah. have end up in the hospital. So you want to make sure that what you're trying does not have any interactions with the medications you're currently taking. Um, some people have PCOS and they are diabetic, but they want to um, transition to a natural path. So I would say um, definitely work, find a doctor that will work with you, will explore different options with you. Don't go out on yourself, by yourself, um, trying to try all these different things because you can get yourself into trouble. But definitely look for an integrative doctor or a doctor who is willing to, you know, work with your, your, your alternative um, medicine. Yes, definitely. And and that's that's a good approach, you know, because it's not always just about the medicine as well. Because as we as we've been saying, you know, the medication sometimes could cause other reactions to our bodies that could lead us into worse off problems. I didn't have mood issues, I didn't have those problems before I was taking um the blood control or the glucophage or metformin you know so <clears throat> we have to live we it's good for us to get a doctor who is open to doing that and in Trinidad you can find doctors like that I have yes. one yeah. Yes. And even here in the U.S., there are more and more doctors. They're, they're starting to practice what you call integrative medicine, where they're realizing that it's not just um, physiological <laughs> problems, just, you know, what's going on and, oh, the, mm -hmm. the uterus is not working, the ovaries is not working, but they are taking a holistic or whole body approach as to you know the impacts of stress and the impacts of your diet and the, your lifestyle so there are more and more doctors they're getting into it and with really good results <laughs> so we then shared with the world our story right yes. so, so yeah. if you if you want to join crystal's time management class how will they find you where will they go look, look okay so right now i am mainly on instagram because okay. that's a platform of ease for me right mm -hmm. um in october i plan on launching in link on linkedin okay. all right in november provided that everything goes well i want i'm also trying to launch my website this is gonna you're gonna be holding me accountable to that now right <laughs> yes yes, yes, yes. So i want to launch my website and on there you'll be able to find me but if you want to have a, a meeting with me, you can go to my Instagram page. And I think Casey could put a link, or I think there's a link that she has on her on YouTube here. Um, mm -hmm. There's a link in my bio for a free session. You are able to click on that and let's get talking. Yes, this is yummy conversation. I wish we had this sooner. I, I, I think a lot of women will benefit from it. And I think we, over the years, we have learned from each other, Crystal. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if any of this resonated with you and you want to know more about nutrition, be sure to 
be sure to check out my, I have a, a nutrition class that we had in September. So you could see that class in its entirety. And if you want, if you like this topic, you want to know more, be sure to email me at the spark is love at gmail.com. I will be doing more of what Crystal said about teaching how to be in tune with our bodies because we're all about prevention, proactive, Pro, being proactive and sustainable healthcare. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Crystal. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you <And> very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.